So we just found an eigenspace for one. And we could find eigenspaces for other eigenvalues as well, if we knew them. So let's look back to the definition of eigenvector and eigen, well. Oh, we're gonna do a non-trivial example. Right, let's do that first. So we're going to find eigenvalues and vectors geometrically when the matrix A. Now I'm going to choose a simple matrix, but one that's not quite so simple. The way we're going to answer this, we're going to first look at what does A do to the standard basis. of R2. So first of all, R2, how many elements are going to be in the in any basis in R2? Two. Two. See a lot of people putting fingers up. Well, two fingers, not the finger, but. All right, anytime you look at a basis, just look at the dimension of your space. That's how many basis elements you're going to need. I think on your, well, yeah. So we need two basis elements. All right, what would be a smart basis to choose for R2? So we'll go one, zero, zero, one. So that would be the standard basis, the easiest one you can make. Of course, if we were in three dimensions, it would be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. And dimension four, similar. All right, all we're going to do is just multiply individually each basis element by A. And you're always going to do this on the left. So we're going to cross and down. So we get 1 plus 0. And then the second row is 0 plus 0. Oh, look at that. What can we conclude after this product right here? Does it look like our matrix product is a scalar product for this particular basis element? Did I get a scalar multiple of one zero? Yes. Well, what scalar multiple is this? One. one. It's almost too easy. So this one, our eigenvalue is one. And our eigenvector. And again, you can take any non-zero multiple, but let's just be reasonable and just take the vector we already got instead of taking two times this or some other number times this. So we got an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Now we got lucky because it happened that our basis element uh, was an eigenvector. All right, so I want you to multiply by the other basis element and see what you get and see if that is an eigenvector. And if it is an eigenvector, what eigenvalue would you get for it? So a times 0, 1, multiply that out and see what you can conclude about eigenvectors and values.
So zero, 01 is indeed eigenvector. What eigenvalue did we get this time? Negative 1. Negative 1. Eigenvalues can be positive, can be negative. They're, they just can't be 0. So our eigenvalue is negative 1. This matrix A was a quite a simple matrix, so we were able to find eigenvalues and vectors basically by guessing, by just seeing what happens when you multiply by a basis element, and it just so happened that the basis elements were also eigenvectors. That's generally not going to happen. So the real question is, how are we going to find uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors in general? going to come down to the equation ax equals lambda x and we'll do that same algebra we did before so the way we're going to go about finding this we're going to actually find the value first and then from the value we will get the vector just like we did before <coughs> but finding the value we need to learn a whole another concept before we can find the value. So we're going to find lambda using the determinant. So we're about to get into determinants. So we're going to leave eigenvalues and vectors for a little while, and then we're going to do a whole lesson on determinants, then we're going to come back to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So that's the plan. So we're about to jump into a whole new section. So we looked at two by two determinants in pre-calculus class. We're going to use vertical bars for the determinant uh, notation. That means the determinant of A. Now it looks a little silly when you have a matrix like this inside vertical bars, so you can actually shortcut it and just write it with vertical bars and then you skip wrapping the matrix in parentheses or square brackets however you like to do it so <coughs> you can basically skip that extra those right there they're unnecessary when taking an absolute value no, absolute value when taking a determinant All right, who remembers the determinant for 2 by 2? A times D minus C times B. A, D minus B, C. So that I recommend you memorize. Here is a relatively easy way to memorize it. Just go, oh, I better switch to a highlighter. So when you go up to the right, you're going to subtract those products, and down to the left, you're going to add those products. So basically, if you're increasing or going uphill, you're going to be negative. If you're going downhill, it'll be positive. That's one way to remember on two by two. 
or you can just memorize this, or you can just use your cheat sheet, whatever you want to do. You take enough determinants, believe me, you're going to memorize this pretty quick. It's not terribly complicated in a two by two. All right, so that's how two by two determinants go. We'll do one fast example. Find determinant of two and negative three, four, five. All right, so find this determinant. You're just doing two products and subtracting. So we get 22. So any questions on that? So determinant's a weird function. The input is a matrix and the output is a scalar. So that's kind of strange. The input's a matrix, the output's a scalar. It acts kind of like the uh, magnitude or the modulus. So it has similar properties to the magnitude or the modulus of a vector. So our notation, we use vertical bars like this, and a lot of times we use a dot for the input. So this is going to go from matrices, they have to be square matrices, so it's going to be matrices, n by n matrices. And if you have real coefficients, then your output will be real numbers. So just like we did computer right there, the output was going to be a real number. If, you're, if all of your values are integers, your output will be an integer as well, more specifically. You won't, a fraction won't show up if you didn't start out with fractions. Now if we have n by n matrices with complex coefficients, the output could be complex. So if they were all complex numbers, then products and sums of complex numbers would be complex numbers. Likewise, if we have an n by n matrix over Zp, our output will be scalars, which come from Zp. So whatever your scalar your set of scalars is, or I should say your field of scalars, but don't worry about that word field. Whatever your scalar field is, your output is going to be the same type of scalar. Most of the time, it's going to be real. Occasionally, you might see a complex or a ZP question in the homework. The way we're going to compute determinants is we're going to use uh, cofactor expansion. And in order to do expansion, cofactor, cofactor expansion, we need a definition for a matrix minor. So matrix minor is a submatrix of some matrix A with a row and column removed. So for example, if A is A11, A12, row one, column two, row one, column three, that'll be A13. A21, A22, A23. So if that's your A right there, there are going to be, a, there's a minor for every row and column combination. So there are nine minors of this matrix. We'll just find three of them. So I'll find the first two. So we'll go M11. 
All right, so find minor 1, 1. I'm going to erase the highlighter I'm putting down here, so don't you can skip using this highlighter if you want. But I'm going to use it to shade out some things. Ooh, that's way too dark. Go gray. There we go. So you're looking in position 1, 1, or row 1, column 1. All we're going to do is ignore row 1, ignore column 1. So I'm just going to cross them out. Now, you don't want to cross them out on your paper because you can't just erase like I can. So you can use your pen or pencil, or you can use a couple fingers and cross out the row column that you're on. So I'm just going to cross them out with this pen. And what's left is our minor. So this 2 by 2 that you see is the minor. So our minor is going to be a22, a23, a32, a33. So any questions on our upper left minor? All right, so that was minor 1, 1. Again, that 1, 1 was re remove row 1, remove column 1. So now I want you to find minor 1, 3. What I'm going to do is just highlight the 1, 3 element. So row 1, column 3. So I want you to write the matrix where you're removing the row and column that this entry is in. So remove row 1, remove column 3. So you should have A21, A22, A31, A32. So any questions on that? We'll just do one more. Let's go for M23 this time. And I will highlight that entry. So two, three. on the M23. All right, so that was how to find minors. Now we're going to write out a sign matrix. And all the sign matrix does, it has alternating signs. So if we have a 3x3 three three sign, ma sign matrix, you always start with positive. And when you go across a row or down a column, you just alternate as you go. So it's going to go plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus. Now I'm going to fill in column two. I'm alternating signs as I go down off of that negative sign in column two. So it's going to go minus, plus, minus. Now we're going to do column three. It's plus, so it's minus, plus. Now one thing that happens it alternates signs in the rows and the columns if you do it right. So you're basically laying out a checkerboard or a chessboard where I don't play enough chess or checkers, but I don't know what's in the upper left corner. It's either red or black, but one of them is plus, one of them is minus. So you're just making a checkerboard where it goes minus and plus. So that would be a three by three. Of course, there can be other sizes. It should be pretty obvious how to make a sign matrix on any size. You just put it, make sure, super important, the plus is in the upper left corner. Don't put the minus up there. So after you do that, you just alternate signs. All right, there's, uh, what we're gonna do is put all this together with a uh, cofactor expansion. And we gotta do that in next class.